Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to Overflow Beyond the Music, Season 3, Episode 2. I'm your host, Josh McCabe. Hope you're all doing real well. I'm back in Nashville. Just got back from Canada. We had our Canadian Thanksgiving. Had a good time visiting with family. We're a little weird up in Canada. We do our Thanksgiving in October. And um, the downside is that we don't extend it for like five or six days like you guys do in America. But the upside is that I get a double portion of Thanksgiving because you bet I'm celebrating Thanksgiving while being here in America in, uh, I think it's what, November or something like that. So I will definitely be enjoying Thanksgiving again when it comes here in America where I currently reside. But anyways, um, we got a guest on our podcast this week. His name's David Leonard. He is a uh, an artist, a producer, a songwriter, a worship leader. You may recognize his name from the band All Sons and Daughters that he had founded with Leslie Jordan. He wrote one of the most epic worship songs ever, Great Are You, Lord. And he has a new record out, and uh, you'll love it. The original record is called The Wait, and then he did a follow-up to The Wait, which is like stripped-down versions called Silence or The Wait, Silence, and Noise, and we talk a little bit about that in this podcast, and we'll get there in just a second but I uh, want to make sure that you are following us online. Again, Instagram at OverflowBTM. Please follow us. Please, please, please drop us a comment. I'd love to hear from you. I'd love to get to know you. That would be absolutely killer. So we, um, oh man, we have so many great guests coming up on this season and more interviews to still be recorded. So you are going to make sure that you're uh, along for the ride. So make sure wherever you're listening to this, if it's Spotify, Apple Music, um, I don't know, iTunes Podcast, whatever it is, make sure that you hit subscribe. Please make sure you subscribe. It really helps us out in getting the word out about this podcast. And again, anything you can do to spread the word, we greatly appreciate it. That is how we keep this podcast rolling. So let's hear a little bit of his music. This is Wanderer by David Leonard, and then we're going to head straight on in to our conversation. My name is Josh McCabe. I'm your host here, and this is Overflow Beyond the Music. I am a criminal Claiming treasures not on my own I am a hypocrite Things to say the self all right, everybody, here I am, Franklin, Tennessee, uh, downtown Franklin. It's nice to not have to travel too far for an interview. Um, and I am in a studio, Creek Music Studio, right downtown Franklin, Tennessee, and I'm here with David Leonard. How are you doing, man? Hey, man, doing good. Hey, I got I to gotta tell you this. We actually were supposed to meet 10 years ago. Ooh. Let, me, let me tell you this story, and let me tell you why us Canadians make fun of people in Nashville. <laughs> so... I um I was leading worship in Canada and been sending some music and some songs to this guy Mike Murray. Yeah. And he goes, "Hey, there's this this is new writing duo. Uh David Leonard and Leslie Jordan. Uh and he sent me this demo of I think it was Brokenness Aside. Yeah. Like just a little demo. Yeah. And I was like, "Yeah, I oh, oh, yeah, of course I want to write with these people. This would be great." So I was super stoked to get like this agreement to come write with you guys. And um, they called it a blizzard. I called it a light dusting oh, of snow. No, no. <laughs> everything shut down. And we, yeah. So it snowed here. The it day snowed we're here. To yeah, it snowed oh, here, and gosh. so everyone had to cancel everything. And it wasn't just, in fairness, it wasn't just you who canceled. Everybody <laughs> canceled that day. So I mean, who knows? We we might have we might have written you know something. The best song ever. We might have written "Great Are You Lord" that day. <laughs> we might. My, have. my life would look a little different today. <laughs> No, I'm just messing with nah, that. Man. Everything shuts down here anytime it thinks about snowing. It doesn't even matter if it snowed. School shut down. Yeah. Oh, like yeah. They close it down, man. Well, dude, it's really good to be able to hang out. It's good to be able to be in your in your workspace here. Yeah, man. Um, so tell me a little bit about um, this room that we're sitting in. Yeah. So I've been in here for, I was, it's crazy. I was talking about it today. We've been in the house for almost seven years now, a little, little over six had a couple rooms in the back, and then slowly started taking over the whole house. Took over the whole house about three and a half years ago, and uh, yeah, man, it's we've tried to create a, a space that is completely creative. And the second you come in here, you feel like you want to create, and um, it feels homey. And I don't know, we've worked real hard to kind of we're all we're all about vibe things, you know. It, right. it has to have the right vibe. There's some vibe. There's some vibe. So. 
uh, I don't know. It, it, it's become home, and we, we love it. So what kind of stuff, what what does a typical week look like at the Creek Music? Dude, we're usually here every day, 9 to 6. We carry them office hours, man. Yeah. Trying to, <laughs> trying to, trying to be good. Yeah. yeah, trying to stay productive, but at the same time trying to be with family as well. Um, but yeah, I mean, it'll either be, we'll either be tracking something, we'll be writing something, um, there'll be bands in, whatever. Like, there's, there's constantly something being made in mm-hmm. here every day. Um, so it's kind of crazy, pretty, pretty wild that we could do it. Well, I mean, a lot of people might not know this about you, but you, you probably as involved in making, probably more so making records for other people than you are even your own stuff. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about the production producer side of of David Leonard. Yeah. So, I mean, it started out as kind of just dabbling with it, um, probably closer to almost 10 years ago, kind of started dabbling with it. And just kind of started taking on small things here and there in between tours. And Mm -hmm. so that stuff started happening. And then when we decided to take the year off uh, from All Sons and Daughters at the beginning of 2017, me and my two best friends, Seth Talley and Brad King, we decided to create a production team together called The Creek Music. Mm -hmm. And uh, we decided we were going to run after it, see how hard we could go. And we literally haven't stopped since then. And uh, it's been crazy, just the stuff we're working on, and we're sitting in rooms that we never thought that we'd get the chance yeah. to be a part of, and we're just having a blast. Does does the is there a part of you that when you're in the studio, you kind of wish you were, uh, you know, on the stage, or when you're on the stage, you kind of, or when you're, you know, checking in early for a flight, you go, I miss, I miss my yeah. nine to six. <laughs> for sure, there's the tug and pull. I mean, there's the beauty of like. You know the artist side is the the artist side feels like you know getting to go out and do the road thing feels like that first full circle kind of thing. Right. You know you spend all these times writing and creating these songs, and then you get to stand in front of an audience and you get to see the kind of like you get the to have your labor. yeah you get to have this encounter. People yeah. give you energy back, and um, I love it. It's kind of this kind of good kind of these like two things that I, I need both of them. In order to continue this kind of cycle of, of what we're doing, when um, I mean uh, to, to take people back a little bit, you were a touring member of the band Need to Breathe, mm-hmm. one of my favorite bands of all time, um, and uh, then moved on to All Sons and Daughters, mm-hmm. and now have been doing some stuff on your own. Tell me a little bit about um, life even before Tour with Need to Breathe, because you had another band yeah. before that. Yeah. Um, and the name escapes me, but I know I've seen you play. Jackson Waters. Jackson Waters, that's yeah. right. I remember um, I was, at the time, uh, working for like the Falling Up Hawk Nelson oh, camp, yeah. doing merch. Like yeah, a, we did a ton of stuff with them. Did like a, I was like a little punk kid, 19-year-old, yeah, yeah. selling merch. Teresa Davis. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, so I used to uh, work with her. That's kind of my first little you know, intro into the world, because yeah. the Hawk guys... They were all Canadian. They are all Canadian, about yeah. 30 minutes from where I live. Trevor McNeven, 30 yeah, minutes from dude. where I live. Um, Chris Green, Manifest, yep, 30 yep, minutes. Yep. We all kind of are in the same yeah. boat, but those guys kind of ran a, ran ahead of me. Like, they yeah. were sort of a few years ahead of me. So, so, yeah, getting a tour with the guys I looked up to. But I remember seeing you guys play, and um, like, tell me a little bit about, even before that, you know, before Nashville record deals, where did you begin to explore this, this gift of music, this gift of writing? Yeah, I mean, I, I kind of grew up with music uh, around my dad was like a worship pastor um but he didn't really play anything like he, he didn't play guitar he didn't play piano he was kind of like that was the days of like the yeah the guy leading on sundays waving his hand and stuff oh yeah like the, the big director mics, the big purple mic oh song. yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> all things are possible all things yeah. um but yeah so i mean that's kind of how i grew up so I, I didn't grow up playing anything my grandma played piano and organ so i always grew up watching her but that felt like the old thing to do you know right. it's like nobody that wasn't very cool yeah and i grew up in this little small town so like nine thousand people and i didn't know anybody that played guitar there weren't any bands in my hometown or anything like that so it was always kind of like this distant thing that wasn't really achievable you people in other places did that kind of stuff and then we kind of did our thing um but i ended up seeing some friends playing uh they kind of made a band and i saw them play and i was like whatever that is i want to be a part of Hmm. that and kind of caught the bug and ended up buying a guitar when i was 16 and just 
started kind of going for it, learning as many songs as I could and tried to write stuff and uh, did all that and then ended up going to college and that's kind of where we started the Jackson Water stuff. That's where all that stuff kind of came out of. Started playing piano and all that stuff. Do you remember the first song that really, like, got you? Do you remember, like, a, a, a specific song that goes, ooh, all right, like, the, now, like, I need to learn this, or or maybe it's just a song that when you think about growing up playing music, you, you think about playing. Oh, man. I mean, a, a lot of, I'm, I, I listen to a ton of Christian music, but then at the same time, so like, I remember the first song that I ever played with that, uh, that band, they, they asked me if I wanted to come sing a song at this deal they were doing at this college. And I was like, y'all come. And they were like, will you learn Jars of Clay? Uh, it's like, what is that? Flood? No. Was it Dear God or what? A dear uh, God. Oh, shoot. Surround me as I speak. We're going to find him. Play Whatever. This podcast. Like we'll a child. It. Like a child, I okay. think is what it's called. And uh, much Sorry, I got to say this. Much Afraid is one of the greatest oh, man. records of all time. For sure. Tea and Sympathy. Yeah. <laughs> so well awesome, written. awesome, dude. So well written. That was good stuff, man. But yeah, so, so that was the first one. That was the first one that kind of got me into it, got me hooked. But yeah, I mean, I grew up at that time. I was listening to a ton. I, I worked with these guys at this little sporting goods store, yeah. and they were huge, like classic rock, kind of like nice. everything. And so I got the education that yeah. I needed, which was, you know, everything was Stevie Ray Vaughan. Everything was, you know, all that kind of stuff. And then, then fell into fell in love with the R and B side of that with Stevie Wonder and Otis Redding and Bill Withers and all that, and that's that's kind of when when I really started writing songs and the stuff that I was like going, hey, if I could do anything like that soul kind of thing that they had was was where I kind of landed. So yeah, you you mean you talked about the soul and and one thing I, I noticed straight away when when I listened to All Sons and Daughters was. Um, you guys didn't sing worship songs like worship songs were being mm -hmm. sung at the time. It was very fresh and um, utilized a lot of different elements. What what was sort of the birthing process of, of that project for you? Yeah, I mean, a, a lot of that stuff was just out of necessity. Like, hmm. we were serving, she was serving at a church, at the church that we were going to, Journey Church here in Franklin. And it was just like a season of in our church where we, we didn't have songs really to sing. We weren't like this kind of rah-rah yeah, rah, yeah. kind of church. Like it, I like best describe it as kind of like a posture thing. Right. Like it was more like our kind of head down, hands open kind of thing. A little bit more open, but not really like, not really excited about anything. So it was a lot of questions, a lot of doubt, but then yeah. at the same time, the beauty of the hope that kind of was swirling around through all of that um and so yeah uh, and even the sound like the sound was kind of what was a part of our church yeah it's it true to who you guys were yeah, it was organic it's nashville it's like there's gonna be acoustic guitar probably a banjo at some point yeah you know? yeah so <laughs> so i mean it's it sounds like you i mean when when i listened to when that came out it wasn't just great great songs being written by it but they were being presented in a way that was fresh mm. and um i mean fast forward to now and we'll talk a little bit more about the project on yeah. the end but i want to talk more about the kind of the trailblazer element because I, I listened to uh your, your newest record and um it, it was interesting to me because i was trying to figure out what it was mm. like there was moments of these congregational worship moments and then there's these wor moments of just like like you just pouring out your heart and it mm. was dark and moody and then and then there was hope like there was just so many different elements and i i can imagine someone going i'm not sure where this fits yeah so tell me like a little bit about how you like do you embrace that in producing for other people for yourself tell me about not fitting in a box <laughs> <laughs> no i mean i don't know I, it's one of those things that it 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 can be a gift and it can be a burden at the same time um, because it, it is we, we, you know I've always been a believer of no one's going to believe in music that you don't believe in yourself mm. and so whenever it came to writing songs or producing the stuff um, I wanted to make stuff that I was moved by and yeah. sometimes it's moodier sometimes it's dark sometimes it's it's filled with hope um which is kind of my life it's like i feel a mixture of all those things 
Um, but this record was one of those that we wanted. We we were like, okay, hey. And I say we. I mean, me and the two guys that do the Creek stuff together. We all produced mm-hmm. this and did it together. Cause, so it felt like a band making a record. Right, you know? right. But we wanted to make a worship record that was for the weekday kind of thing. You yeah. Know? I, I, so many worship records are made for Sunday. Yeah. And we like lose the, the beauty of the like all the hours that we spend throughout the week kind of walking it out. And we wanted to make something that felt creative and felt felt like we were able to kind of live in it and didn't have to just move past it. It didn't have to be a, a thing that we just put it on and that, that's a deal and then you move on to the next. But we wanted it to be a thing that it, it could actually, it could hover through your day. And um, so there's tons of different moments and there's tons of different feels. Um, but super proud of it. Like, you know, even with All Sons of Dars, we always wanted to make stuff that we felt like our friends would listen to. Mm-hmm. So it didn't matter if it was like the coolest thing in the world, but we wanted to make stuff that was true to us and and true to the season of life we were in. And um, this definitely feels like that. And we'll see. I don't know. Who knows, man? But it, it's been such an interesting thing where, like, people, you know, I've done interviews and people have gone, you know, why did you step away from the corporate worship thing? And I'm mm-hmm. like, well, I didn't. Like, yeah. this is corporate worship to me. And so it's been interesting to hear how, if it doesn't sound a certain way or um, that it doesn't fit in this box. So. That's interesting to me because, and I want to I want to sit on that for a minute because, I, I mean personally when I when I when I've come to be writing music, I I, I feel like there's enough corporate, like it feels like every church is releasing a worship album yeah, every week right. and, yeah. which is awesome, which is awesome, no totally and people writing for the communities like but I I look at it there there you're right there is a lot of Sunday corporate worship and that's great we need it I love it. Um, but do you, as a producer writer, do you find that you, you want to try and steer people away from doing the thing that's always been done or, or do you feel, you know, do you want to try and pull out new things in people? Yeah. I mean, I think that's a, you know, if we can walk in the room and we can pinpoint the things that people have forgotten about in their lives or people have never seen in themselves. Like those are the things that we want to, we want to pull out of them and not just to be different. Like Mm -hmm. there's a, there's a difference between doing something different just to be different. And then there's, there's the finding the beauty and the differences. Mm. And, uh, you know, always have tried to do that and not just to, to try to do it, to, to be like, you know, flowing upstream kind of thing. Um, but you know, it's, it's interesting when you think about all these churches that have had major impacts, Hillsong, Bethel, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Like you look at this and, and you, the, 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 the kind of disconnect that happens is people forget, people just see those things and they think that these people are just writing for these big grand things like hitting the world but but what people don't understand is like those communities bethel hill like they write for their community yeah and what's going on and the reason they've kind of exploded is because it it reached something and then it it hit other walls outside of it and i think if we could always continually have our eyes focused on what it is that we write songs for who it is that we create for that it it won't matter like it, you can you can take out if it blows up or not whatever mm-hmm. you, you just got to create for what what you know you're supposed to create for and create for it and then whatever happens outside of it is is kind of the bonus um but yeah i i think there's a lot of misunderstanding of of what all these things do yeah. and people just do this stuff thinking that it's well it, it's almost like um i talk coming from the pastoral world yeah it's like so and so has a successful youth ministry or college ministry so logically we have to do a conference next yeah and and then logically we have to do an album and i kind of go well, like we always got to ask god what are you what ground are you giving me permission to take and what aren't you yeah because you can sow a lot of things with wasted energy and you know I, i'm curious for you too like you you could sew into being only a producer. You could sew into writing the next big congregational song, or you could sew into your own career. You, you even could could start a mainstream career, just making mm. music for film and TV, and just doing all of that. But you've you've kind of found this balance, 
and and how was finding that balance and figuring out what the sweet spot in each of these giftings you have because you you have a wide range of giftings. Well, that's awesome to hear. <laughs> uh, for especially for a guy that feels like he's failing at a lot oh, of those. We things. all feel like that, yeah. Um, I don't know. I mean that that is the struggle. That's the thing that I you know I constantly am going. Am I am I hitting all these things? Am hmm. I doing the things that I that I feel like I need to do and all this stuff and um, the the piece that I that I've grown to truly love out of all this is is the community element of all of it. Yeah. So whether you're on the road meeting new people or whether you're in the studio and you're creating together, um, being able to to hear visions of what God's doing in different places mm-hmm. and to help people figure out how to say that and how to do that is something that I love so much. And and hearing the stories on the road of what God's doing in these different communities, like that's the kind of stuff that it, it's kind of like the one piece that I think connects it all and allows me to continue to do all of it. Mm-hmm. Um, because it's it's real easy to get lost in the details of everything else and forget about the reasons that you do all this stuff. Yeah, And um, that's the very thing that's got to stay in the forefront of my brain. Yeah. I mean, I want to talk about, I mean, we talked about producing and writing songs for yeah. other people and all stuff, but I, I really believe that there's certain songs that get people through seasons mm. and sometimes it's your own song. Um, and I, you released a project and I want to get the name right, um, called the weight earlier this year. Yeah. And there was talk about subject matter of anxiety, yeah. um, infertility, yeah. uh, talk a little bit about the pain of writing songs that are so close to your heart. Like I think of David writing those Psalms. Yeah. Like, where are you Lord? Like we, we can read them so flippantly in church and not realize the pain that was coming through yeah. the pen as he's writing. Yeah. So tell me about some of those. Well, even like a more interesting piece about this whole thing is, is that I wasn't even writing for a record. Wow. Like I was writing the majority of these songs for other artists and for other projects and things like that. And it was a hard season. It was one of those that it was like I walked in heavy most of those days. And it comes through in the songs. Like... um but I feel like since I wasn't writing for something specific, since I was just, I got to come in 100%, be me. I didn't feel like I had to like put on any face of anything. Like mm-hmm. I could just write. I feel like it allowed me to be more vulnerable, and and I and I wasn't writing for a project for myself, so I wasn't overthinking it. Like. Yeah. I wasn't I wasn't editing myself while I was doing it. Like I would just simply say what was on my brain and then it would come out and if they resonated with it, it was awesome. If it, they didn't, then it was okay. Like it wasn't mm-hmm. a it no, wasn't no pressure. Like, no pressure environment. Yeah. And like I feel like it was a gift to me. I feel like God gave me a gift with that of creating this. And when we started looking back at the songs, we were like six months down the road and we started looking at these songs and we're like, these are my songs mm-hmm. um, and then it was I only wrote I, I tried to write three more at the end just to see what would happen if I actually wrote for it and we end up only keeping one of those which was threads um, but yeah it's it was kind of crazy man it's just a it was a tough season of of going God why would you allow me and my wife to walk through this stuff of trying to want to have more kids and then to have the miscarriage Mm -hmm. and feel like the rug was just pulled out from under us. Uh, And then for the band to end at the same time. And, you know, knowing my past, I've been a part of a lot of different things and, you know, only a few of them have worked. And the one that was working the best is gone now. Mm. And so who am I? Like, Am I going back to that dude that nobody showed up to shows at? And so there's tons of identity stuff. Did you did you feel like, you know, as the band ends and you know there's this desire for another child, and and you know you talked about identity, but did you ever, was there ever that feeling that maybe your best days were behind you? Yes, every day. And and how did you reckon reconcile that? How does that? How do you reconcile that feeling and yet still show up to work? Yeah, I mean, I don't know if I have. I mean, I think it's still one of those things where I I still go, eh, 
maybe maybe the best days are behind me but i'm still gonna show up i'm still gonna pour in the same way and mm. uh, one of the the beauties that that god's kind of shown me through all this stuff and and it, it it was during a lot of that you know after gritty lord you you tend to try to write songs and you tend to try to write another one right and, it's and you like, probably write about 50 trying to write it before you just give up and then you write yeah. and then you end up writing the one right <laughs> but it's one of those things that you, you go i'm never gonna redo this this was, that was a gift that was something that god gave us and it's something that's been sweet to the world now what can i do now of, of continually trying to hear his voice and can try and tr- continually trying to to find um what's needed right now for me and I, and got to the point of going all right hey if what i'm doing right now is for right now for the people i'm sitting in this room with then that's it and let's have a worship experience let's experience god together let's ex- experience something brand new um and that that's kind of how i tried to live my life with all this stuff so doing shows working on records it's like man whatever we're doing like we pray that we have an experience with god and and we're able to walk away with something brand new each day one of the things that keeps seemingly coming up on this podcast is artists opening up about identity. Mm. Um, that struggle of, of who am I beyond what I do? Yeah. Uh, which is so interesting because that's, that's my whole, that's whole, my whole testimony and yeah. we'll, we'll get a chance to have coffee and talk yeah. sometime. But uh, the other thing that came up as I was, you know, reading and there, you know, I knew enough about you to, to come in, but I yeah, wanted yeah. to still read the the little thing that your PR people send out. Yeah. And I saw the word anxiety. Yeah. And I was shocked. I said, like, I thought to myself, another? Mm. Because that's been my battle lately. Yeah. Not being able to sleep at night due to anxiety. Um, that's a battle that you faced and a battle I'm seeing just so prevalent in our community. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about how that played out for you in your personal life it's one of those paralyzing things for me um it's one of those things that kind of shuts me down completely so i'll i'll tend to not want to work not want to talk to anybody um uh, even at home like all the above it's one of those things that sends me kind of in a in a tailspin and it's just like i don't know and, it, and it's one of those things that it'll pop up out of nowhere and something will send me into it. Um, but it's it's tons of fear things. Um, and I don't, I've, I've gone to counseling. I've tried to figure out where it stemmed from. And I can't put a finger on it, but it's one of those things that continues to happen. Uh, and it, it gets less and less, but it's still one of those that will appear now and then. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, man, I got so many friends that we all walk through it, and it's one of those things that you just, you start to feel like, okay, is this kind of like the nature of the beast of what we do? It's like we're constantly in our heads trying to craft things, and we've almost lived there too long. So, you know, it's interesting because I I said this, you know, as I was I was talking to my wife about just how I was feeling with anxiety and you know medication and all that stuff, and just just trying to battle it. And and it leaves you feeling because as as artists we wanna we wanna soar, we wanna hit our sweet sweet spot, we wanna yeah. be inspired, we wanna we wanna run through the fields, yeah, right? Yeah. And then you feel like there's this crippling thing that you're always trying to manage. Mm. And you kinda go, Is this any way to live? And that's a really scary thought when yeah. you start going, Am I gonna deal with this the rest of my life? Yep. Or or can this just be a season? It 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 puts you in a weird headspace. Yeah. And you know, I think I think that's why I'm I'm grateful that we have outlets like music yeah. where we can we can pour it into that. But um man, it's it's a it's a tough burden that that and more and more as we talk about this in the podcast, it was never set out to be a talking about this subject a lot but realizing a lot of our listeners are struggling with it too yeah I mean, it was one of those things that we we started so we made a movie with this whole deal i made a music music video that went with every song mm-hmm. and then it kind of all tied together and made this movie but while i was making that thing it was it was so interesting to kind of be able to pull back and to look down and see all the things I was feeling with all of these songs and mm. the season of life I was in. It was it was therapeutic in a weird way 
of like creating a visual of of my headspace yeah. and where I was, um, and extremely vulnerable at the same time to show people it. Right. Um, and uh, yeah, you know, so maybe you should just make a movie. Maybe. It, <laughs> yeah, maybe. I mean, we our most listened to episodes were the two. Um, we did two episodes on this podcast on mental health, oh, and we could have made eight because I kept yeah. getting people reaching out yeah. wanting to be on it. And Guaranteed. you know, we had Brian Johnson on, yeah. and we had um, you know Darren from We Are Messengers on, just yeah. and just people being open about it. And um, yeah, I, I like to tell the beauty that comes out on the other side because you have another project that's uh, so it's already out. It's already out now. Yep. Okay. I, yep. So yeah, the email when I got it yeah, was saying yeah, yeah. it was coming out. So yep, yep. Um, it's, it's out. out now. And by the time this podcast airs, it'll be definitely out. So tell me a little bit about the follow up to the first, the first project. Well, so it's, it's still a part of the first project. So we, it's, it's basically an acoustic version of the entire record of okay. the weight. So it's the weight, silence, and noise. And, I mean, it was one of those ideas that we had from the beginning of making the wait when we said, all right, hey, mm. we don't want to have any rules with with making this record. Let's just make it the way we want to. Yeah. And we're not going to worry about anything else. We're only going to respond to the songs and, and what we feel like, you know, we resonate with it. And so we did that. We made it. And, and it's been awesome. And we love it. But at the same time, we, we were like, all right, hey – we really feel like these songs have some weight and lyrically carry a message that really needs to be told and it doesn't need to be hidden with production. Yeah. So we would like to do a record six months later. We want to release a record that's just me, piano or synths, whatever. Yeah. And it's just a stripped back version of the entire record. And um, it's been so cool, man, how these songs have come to life and hit people like songs that people have been listening to on the record that they didn't get something from all of a sudden now are listening to this and they're like Mm -hmm. oh my gosh like this is my new favorite um so it's been super cool to to have that and and see it and we filmed it too so we have videos up and video more and more videos are starting to roll out of the entire thing um and I'm, i'm super proud of it too the song i loved was was right off the top was wanderer yeah uh because I, you know, listened to it right off the top, and yeah. I go, okay, I'm catching this vibe. That was, that was my introduction of who I am, yeah, or who I think I am. Yeah, tell me about where some of those lyric lyrics come from. Man, I it it was uh, yeah. I, I think whenever we decided that that we were going to do the record, it, I had that song, and and it was like, okay, if I ever wanted to have an introduction. Yeah. Of who I really feel like I am in 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 like in my head and and the things that I walk through, this is truly how I see myself. Um, I was like, I would love to introduce myself to the world that way I and love, allow people to see it. Yeah, I'm a prodigal. I can make it on my own. I am a runaway. Yeah. I'm a criminal claiming treasures not my own. I'm a hypocrite. Things I've said are seldom done. And it takes, and it only takes a moment before the thrill has gone away because I'm a wanderer. Yeah. Where does that? <laughs> how, how do you reckon? Like, how 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 am I supposed to to take those lyrics? Tell tell me, tell me what's behind those because I I can assume sort of what's behind it on a on a fifty thousand foot level. Yeah. But take us into the head of I'd David. I love to Leiter. hear what you assume. Well, I mean, I <laughs> I mean, I I take it this way. Because I, I resonate with that. I, I resonate with um, having a Jekyll and Hyde. Yeah. Having a side of me that is so passionate about seeing people come to know Jesus and having a side of me that is so flawed yeah. that if people knew my stuff. Um, but I feel like embracing a prodigal nature is interesting because mm. when we can identify that we are prodigals, yeah. that constantly run from home yeah but the thing is that i think um the son wouldn't come home if he didn't think he'd be accepted Mm. he knew he'd be accepted back yeah Yeah. or else he wouldn't have come home yeah and i think we can rest in that and going that we we may run at times um not out of uh uh what's the word not out of um rebellion but we we stray yeah. But we know that we can come back home. Yeah. And a prodigal knows that they can always come home. Yeah, man. 
I love that. I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> there we go. There's the answer. <laughs> There's the answer. That's what the song's about. No. Put words in your mouth, man. <laughs> but no, I just, I love how honest that is because um, to say I'm a criminal and I'm a hypocrite yeah. in a song in a worshipful nature, that that would raise eyebrows, wouldn't yeah. it? Yeah, I think so. And maybe is that what's meant? Is that what's meant to do, or is it just no, meant to I just mean, be what it's it is? It's just meant to be truth. Yeah, of how I feel. I, I I wasn't trying to do something to create a stir to create. Yeah, of course. Controversy. It was is more or less like, all right, hey, if I'm gonna be honest, this is this is what I feel, and it's it's been one of those deals that I've I feel like, um, you know, with production with songwriting, um, I have the claiming treasure is not my own kind of thing that that line all those stick out to me greatly because it, you know i've been greatly convicted about songwriting working with new artists mm. um and especially in this town you get to the certain point where you you know you're the professional writer in the room or whatever yeah. you know and people come in and and they'll show you an idea and and then you tell them how it's supposed to go kind right. of thing and it, it's just like it just started bugging me. I've gone. I I've thought I've had it figured out so many times, and and I've I've wondered how many times I've snuffed out creativity hmm. or create or snuffed out something that was brand new that needed to be given. Um, and when I thought it was supposed to be something else, hmm. and um, I don't know. I don't know. There's just a lot of that stuff that that kind of that weighs with me of 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 realizing that that we're all people and we all have emotions. We all have all the stuff that we carry with us. But at the end of the day, like it does not matter um, because God is truly gone. I don't care where you're at. I don't care where you've been. You're yeah. still mine. And I feel like I've learned that more with my own children than I have with mm. any church service I've sat in or small group or whatever. Like um, the glimpse that you get from being a parent and seeing your child is is I, I feel like it is partially a glimpse of the way that God sees us, um, and gives totally new perspective on on the love of a father and and what it means to love children that are that should be unlovable. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but for some reason, we cho- he chooses to love us anyway. Tell me a little bit about some of the the co-writing process on this album um you mentioned producing it with you know kind of like a band with your your creek music boys but tell me a little bit about some of the people you co-wrote with and where some of those uh relationships came from or 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 some of the co-writes that stick out yeah so i wrote a ton of these songs with uh, ethan hulse and andrew rip which were just buddies we would just end up getting together yeah we were getting together pretty frequently and just writing songs Sometimes we would be writing for Rip. Sometimes we were writing for somebody else, and um, so that was like share this burden, know your heart, threads, yeah, um, all those, which were just really meaningful sessions to me because we we're all, all three kind of walking through the same season of life, and uh, it was it was like therapy for us to right. get together and 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 to write together, um, and then there's like. You know, songs like I Will Wait, which I wrote with Levi Smith, and that's on Gateway's record as yeah. well. Yeah, yeah, um, um, Just a bunch of different people that were just like totally random and writing yeah. for other artists. So That's great. Yeah. So just a lot of it just came organically. All of it, yeah. Did you feel that writing with, with those people... Um, you know, not not flying to L.A. and New York and yeah. flying all over the place to write with, you know, the 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 mega yeah 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 bunch. Did you find that being in those spaces gave you a lot more permission to explore honest lyrics of where you're at? Yeah, like yeah. safety for sure, definitely. Uh, in, since all of them were pretty much friends, yeah, it felt like I didn't I could come in with my guard down, you know, and just be me and. um yeah, I, f- I feel like I found some really like lifelong writing partners mm-hmm. um, that I will continue to write with and continue to dream with about what it what it would look like. And um, yeah, I, I tend to write in seasons. Like 
like right now I'm in a like a not so writing season. Right. Um, but I, I tend to to kind of have those moments, and and during that process was just like it felt like it was a, a daily deal that was just happening all the time. Well, we listened to Wanderer coming into this conversation, yeah. and um, I want us to 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 leave the conversation here in a clip from of the song Threads. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about about Threads before we hear a bit. Yeah, Threads was the last song to be written for the song for the record. Okay. Uh, it was like, hey, I want to try to write one for. for for the record and can we beat something that's on there hmm. and um me and rip and ethan all got together and we all, every time we would get together we would go out to leaper's fork yep. we would have breakfast at this place called country boys out there nice and we'd spend a couple hours of drinking coffee and eating eggs and bacon and talking about whatever was yep. going on in our lives and then we would come back here and we would just kind of you know doodle around for a bit and then all of a sudden something would kind of appear cool that's awesome and threads was one of those that that kind of just appeared like the the idea of being unraveled and turned into the very thing that god wanted us to be turned into was something that once we said it it was like oh my gosh like that's something that i desire all the time like will you pull the very pieces of me yeah apart the the things that i do not need the things that i do not desire Will you please pull them and and take them away and turn them into the very things that that make your heart beat? Mm. And um, yeah, it, it's been a special one. And you know, I never thought that it would have the plays that it has and people doing it. It's just it's kind of it's really cool to see it kind of yeah. come to life. That's awesome. Well, the project, um, the album, the wait. Silence and Noise. It's live. Uh, it's out now. You can get it everywhere. Spotify, Apple Music, uh, wherever you find music. Um, make sure that you go get it. Make sure you share with a friend. Make sure that you save it, download it, subscribe, like it, heart it, yeah. um, super like it, um, wh- whatever you want to do. Make sure that you support uh, David on this journey because, uh, man, I believe in you and I believe in this Thanks. season. And, uh, let me tell you, your best days are ahead of you, man. Thanks, brother. You're you're, you're taking new ground, and uh, and and deeper wells make way for mm. for more for more filling and more more stuff to come out of it, and more people to be able to uh, draw from from the well that God's building in you, man. Mm. So, um, did not mean to get all prophetic on no, you there, man. but we'll we'll go we'll roll it. with it. Um, but we're gonna close it off. Thanks for taking time today, man. Yeah, man. And um, we're gonna hear clip of threads right now here on overflow beyond the music All right, there you have it. There's my conversation with David Leonard. And um, make sure that you go check out both of his records right now. You've got The Wait and then The Wait, Silence and Noise, which is a stripped down kind of live version. You'll love both of them. I've really, really been enjoying them. And also just in, uh, been enjoying getting to know David a little bit. His studio is real close to my house. And so I popped in a few times to say what's up. And uh, he is a gem. So make sure that you follow him on social media as well. Follow us on social media. You will find all of those links and all of those details in the show notes of this podcast. Again, my name is Josh McCabe. I'm your host here on Overflow Beyond the Music. We'll see you next time.